insert intro here. Just me. Do you have chapstick? Yes. Um, this is episode one of the BK Petcast. We are Bryce and Kenzie. We own and operate the BK Pets on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and any other platform you can think of. And this is our second go at a podcast. We've always felt so confused when it comes to dog treats. Bags at big box stores have entire paragraphs of ingredients, many of which we can't even pronounce, let alone know whether or not they're safe. This is one of the biggest reasons we've switched to single ingredient treats. King Lou Pets makes human grade healthy dog treats that are sourced from family farms here in the US. They're one ingredient and extremely nutrient dense due to the minimal processing that comes with dehydrating and freeze drying. We're also nomadic, which is why we trust King Lou Pets to help keep our dogs healthy and active because as they say, it's raw nutrition on the go. We started a podcast back in 2018, 2019. I think we were still in school. So it had to have been like- Oh, no, 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 because we were living in Spur Ridge. I think it was 2019 we started a podcast, the BK Lounge podcast, which will be continued very shortly. No, 2018. Was it? Yeah. Um, And at that time, we were just kind of interviewing people to find out, people specifically that- did what they wanted to for a living. We interviewed uh, Bryce Meredith, who is now a UFC, or not a UFC fighter, but an MMA fighter on his way to the UFC. And we interviewed small business owners, people who did what they wanted to for a living to figure out. that inspired us. Exactly, yeah. To figure out how they got there, to figure out if there was something that they were doing across the board that we could share with our community of nobody back then. (laughs) 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 And I think that's one of the reasons that we didn't continue the podcast was because we didn't build that sense of community first and it was well we also just didn't like to this day still when we're describing what the podcast was it's still not super clear exactly and so i think that that was a little like hard this mm-hmm. time we have something we're much more like focused and sure about which you'll find out here shortly mm-hmm. <laughs> So, uh, like I said, we're Bryce and Kinsey. We are a 20-something married couple. We got married in 2017. Uh, We started dating in 2017. (laughs) We got married in 2020. Um, And we've always kind of wanted to work for ourselves. We met doing a social media internship at the University of Wyoming. We, in the athletics department. Yeah, in the athletics department. So we were down on the football field and basketball court getting all the photos and videos for social media. It was a pretty cool experience. My very last game covering, I got to do, I got to cover the coin toss. Oh, yeah. That was so cool. down on the field following them. That was while Josh Allen was quarterback. So there was, there was a lot of hype around Wyoming. We were yeah. good. Yeah, that was probably one of the coolest moments for yeah. me of that internship. Definitely. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I'm to throw that a little closer for you. Um, after the intern, well, no, during the internship, we started a blog called pause. <clears throat> oh wait, you already said, sorry. <clears throat> we knew we wanted to work for ourselves, Yeah, but so, we knew we wanted it to be social media based. Yeah, exactly. And so what we tried to do was create a blog centered around helping small businesses with social media. And it was very much the, it was designed as kind of a young person who's all over social media helping out generally older individuals who are not part of social media. It wasn't like we were offering any groundbreaking advice or anything. And it's it definitely was not like the beginning of social media, but it was still early enough. Like a lot of the unwritten rules we had learned in our internship, like grammar and different like keywords you should and should not use and emojis you should and should not use mm-hmm. and like times to engage it was just it was still new enough people were definitely using social media obviously right but not in the fashion even close to what they are today no we just felt like we had learned so much in that space that we wanted to provide that exactly for other people and i think we just it's not that it, it couldn't have worked. I just don't think it was the right thing for us. Mm-mm. And so we always joke. We Well, not joke because it's a total fact. But we made like 75 cents in advertising from the blog. So then after that, we moved to the podcast that we told you about earlier. We made $12 in advertising. So still nothing. But like if you're looking at how much we multiplied it from the last thing. I'm pretty sure all, mostly all of our listeners up. were like all of our close friends. Yes. Oh, 100%. <laughs> and even into the next one, which was Van Dogs of Instagram. Yes. It was a Instagram account centered around following van lifers that traveled with their dogs. 
We tried to create a community, tried to sell some merchandise, made like a hundred and some dollars, mm -hmm. and then started making pet tags. Yes, we did. <laughs> Remind, remind me how that started because I don't exactly remember. We were in the van and you wanted to sell something that like hung from the mirror. Oh my in God. In accordance with van dogs, like a picture frame that could hang from the mirror. Like a resin picture holder. Yeah. Whoa. And then I can't really remember how it turned into pet tags. We probably like saw a TikTok of somebody right. doing that or something. And so we, you were like, let's do this. <laughs> and I was like, let's not. I grew up crafting. I've always loved to create and use my hands. And I guess I was just kind of burnt out because I was in a sorority. And yeah. we did a lot of crafting and a lot of gifting. And a lot of the gifts were handmade crafts. And so I think that I was just super burnt out and was like, I don't want to create like that anymore right. yeah and rightfully so you you made some shit in chi omega <laughs> a lot of shit um so we started making pet tags in november of 2020 no. after we got married yeah so it would oh, have been 2020 yeah, yeah. um we were making pet tags for about a month and then december 22nd 2020 2020 hits I put out a video in the parking lot. I used to work at the DMV in Laramie. And I put out a video that was just a little, it was putting a jump ring in the loop of the tag. And over the next six days, it got 7 million views. We made $10,000 in sales and put in our two weeks the following Monday. Yeah. Which was like, looking back at it, one of the scariest things we've ever done. Even compared to everything we've done up until this point. We just had no idea Absolutely what anything no idea. would entail. So put in our two weeks and when we when we were doing it full time, it was out of our basement. Um, or and, out of out of a basement apartment. Yeah. And so our first mistake was not putting a cap on orders. Yeah, we allowed people to put in custom orders and mind you, we are fresh out of college, no idea what we're doing in life not ready to be business owners looking in hindsight yeah. and we didn't put a cap on the orders because we were like wow all this money is so cool oh, and cha chings from oh. etsy and then christmas Shopify. day we did over 150 orders it just was for two people with adhd it was too oh, addicting the dopamine was was hitting <laughs> it was absolutely hitting and we didn't put a cap on the orders Obviously, we got so many, and by the time we started working on them in late January, now looking back on it, we were already way behind. Mm -hmm. And so, because we were behind, we started hiring people. Um, we ended up renting a space for a shop. Yeah, it was right across the street from our house. So that was, it was really cool. Pretty convenient. And we kind of tried to open up a little retail store, an online store, expanded into some wholesale products while still doing the tags. And the tags just got to the point where our four to six week shipping time was turning into two to three month shipping time. And and everybody was just getting burnt out from it. It wasn't exactly, just us. Exactly. It was like, and it was getting kind of old for everybody to come in. Yeah. And it was just, it was a grind every day. It wasn't like coming in to be creative and, and design stuff. And I mean, we were answering 50 to a hundred emails a day. So the emails- And most of them were, where's my stuff? Yeah, Rightfully so the so. emails started piling up and we weren't communicating with people. and. Then we started getting bad reviews and even till like two or three months ago, people were still mentioning in our comments, the bad reviews and stuff. And we just got to a point where we're like, we can't do this anymore. We applied for a loan that um, we were going to use to pay our employees for the next foreseeable future. And, and that had to be a specific loan because we weren't in business for a full year. Exactly. We needed tax returns and stuff to get the traditional business mm -hmm. loans, but that ended up falling through. So. We had to let go of our entire team of eight and that was really hard because that was the hardest thing we've probably been through that that year yeah we hired a lot of people that we knew from other parts of our life and so we got close to them obviously mm -hmm. we we're spending five days a week with them sometimes six sometimes seven yep. and that really sucked to let those people down. Yeah, and to disappoint that many people, and especially people you were close with. Mm -hmm. And, you know. We it, had no idea what it would do to some of the relationships. Yeah. We. Yeah. 
yeah, it was really hard. So um, the next two or three months was a tough period because we were like, you know, do we keep trying with the business with just us two, which is what we initially decided. And we kind of got to a point at, at some point later in the year where Kinsey was packaging orders and she was taking a lick mat from Soda Pup out of the box that was shipped to us and putting it in a different box to ship to the customer. And she was just like, why do we exist in yeah. this capacity? Like we are a middleman who like we're paying for shipping and then charging our customers for shipping when they could just order straight from the supplier. Mm -hmm. Well, but, you, like you get those big deposits from orders yeah. and then it's exciting and you feel good, but then there's the cost, like you said, the cost of shipping exactly. and returns and the mail not being delivered correctly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Just, and so we loved making the content about those products, but we just needed a different way to promote them without having, being the ones to actually ship them, which is yeah. how the BK Pets came to be born and how we transitioned into just being influencers. Yeah. It's been a tough transition, but damn it, I'm glad we did this. Me too. Because we have just built, I mean, our community, you're watching this right now. There are so many of you that are looking to improve the lives of your pets, and we just couldn't be more thankful for the community that we've built. And we're proud. Like Seriously. This isn't just something we're doing for clout mm -hmm. or for money. Like We have quit our jobs to figure out how to make our pets live as long as possible, and we figured out how to make money sharing that information with you for free. So that's kind of the transition into what we're doing here and what the PetCast is. This is going to be a deep dive of everything we share on social media. It, you know, everything from slow feeding to enrichment to nutrition to cat content. It could be literally anything. And we've got some really cool stuff coming up yes we definitely <laughs> do so we we really appreciate you being here and um with that being said let's kind of get into the first topic of the pet cast and um i guess first like why well, they should trust us yeah let's talk about that you know we talk a lot about nutrition and enrichment and stuff and we're not vets we uh, she has a marketing degree i have a journalism degree neither of us are in the animal space professionally but what we do have is this crippling fear and anxiety of losing our pets early so we're trying to find all the best resources and all the research and talk to vets and nutritionists and behavioral specialists and compile the information that you need to be the best pet parent you can to your pet there's just no reason that like we respect vets completely exactly. all the time and the effort and the money they put into their work and the long hours but we want to empower pet parents because you don't have to have gotten that vet degree and spent all of that time in school to be able to sit down and read a peer reviewed study. Like you, you don't have to be in the dark. I think that's one of my favorite things about social media Agreed. is how much people are able to learn and have so much more access to information and accessible access. Don't get me wrong. Not everybody can afford a thousand dollar iPhone or whatever you're using right now, but not also not everybody can afford to go to the vet and spend a hundred dollars to I mean, ask their vet there. exactly to ask them what they should feed their dog only to find out it's it's kibble we'll get into that later <laughs> but no this is everything we say even if it's contradictory to what vets or specialists say at times it's not in any way to shame them it's not in any way to make you feel bad for what you're currently doing because number one you don't know what you don't know exactly and number two the, the things that we do are very inaccessible to a lot of people. The way we feed our dogs, the, the products that we are able to use, it's inaccessible to so many. And that's another big goal of ours is to find this information because we have the privilege that we can sit at home all day and do this and bring it to you in an accessible and easy to digest way. Well, and it's not like we're sitting here and we're like, we're so smart and we like literally I cannot read these peer reviewed studies and digest them. Like I have a really hard time with reading and comprehension. And so like you are the one that is able to do that even for me. And then I'm able to help with the content and help get that information out in an easy to understand way. Exactly. And I think that's, that's one of the biggest things that you do. That's one of the, uh, what am I trying to say? Like the biggest pieces of value that you provide is like the easy to digest way is your goal. Like that's, that's what you're trying to do with the content. And so many times you you tell me, you know, maybe you need to say it this way because it doesn't quite make sense or whatever. And mm -hmm. so that's why we're BK. <laughs> so 
The first topic we kind of want to get into with the podcast, pretty generic, is just kind of how we choose products for our dogs, specifically treats and food. And um, a little backstory, we used to feed even... I mean, when we first got Harper... When we first got Harper, we fed her Rachel Ray Nutrish. That was her first. If you're feeding Rachel Ray Nutrish, there are other foods that are the same price that do not do the things that Rachel Ray does. So definitely try to make the switch. But that was the first instance. And then we, I don't know what we switched. I think we did a stint with Royal Canin for a while um, from the recommendation of our vet. Switched over to Purina Pro Plan at some point. But I can't remember if it was before we got Harper or just. No, it was just Harper. But no, when you started getting into like raw feeding yeah, content. Yeah, I remember the the night I asked the vet about it was when we went to the emergency vet. The first time we figured out Harper had car anxiety, which we because didn't know was car anxiety. Yeah, we were <laughs> driving from Cheyenne to Laramie. 45 and minutes. Calling the emergency vet because she's sitting and shaking and panting. We're and like, is this a seizure? I have never had a pet in my life before Harper, and she's four years old. So I've only had a pet for four years. We're freaking out. Oh, we were in separate cars too. Oh we God, have, like, we were taking a load over to your mom's house or something of yeah. stuff. Or but I remember that night asking the vet, like, "What do you think about raw diet?" And essentially, they were like, "Absolutely not. We do not recommend it." So what was that account you liked? Do you remember what it's called? It was um, the Husky, right? Oh, uh, totally. Uh, Gohan. I'm not sure the exact account account name. It might be like Gohan the Husky, but we'll tag it because Gohan was my first introduction to raw food. And this I big husky also was like absolutely chicken not. drumsticks. That's no, we'll never do that. Dogs need to eat kibble. Yeah, it's capitalism that'll brainwash. Once you. again, I something I said I would never do. <laughs> <laughs> we do it. So um, we fed pre. pre PPP up until <laughs> six or seven months ago, I think. And then we started really getting get, getting into the raw diet with the Forever Dog and Karen Becker and Rodney Habib and Paws of Prey on YouTube and many other accounts, Kayla Kowalski, all these people feeding their dogs this biologically appropriate diet. But we've been going back through a lot of our like content and videos and <clears throat> we have videos and like pictures from 2019 like on their birthdays and stuff we've always loved to make them like eggs so i grew up with pomeranians and <clears throat> that one of the things the vet told my mom and i was that eggs are so good for their coat so we would feed scrambled eggs to the pomeranians oh yeah i remember that even when we started dating and then like once we got harper and stuff like if it was a special day or national dog day and stuff mm-hmm. we would do eggs and like we did a fruit salad that yeah, day one time like a fruit salad so we've always been We've enjoyed that realm of, mm-hmm. like, feeding them. Like, and it seems like, in hindsight, we kind of always knew that those fresh foods were healthier because, like, you feed them on special occasion, but, like, you feed eggs to help with their skin and coat health. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's a superfood. Well, and I think it's just also so much more intimate to actually prepare oh, a my meal. Gosh, like, it is. even human to human, like, eating is one of the most, like, intimate and special things. Like, sharing a meal with someone for us is really special you know and like cooking a meal for someone is like that's when you know we really love you (laughs) we're like let us cook for you (laughs) just that that want and need to care for something to the best of your ability and if you are in any way a person whose love language is acts of service to like make a dog food and to put all this time and effort and then I mean, to see them woof it down, it feels good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not Mm -hmm. just a scoop and pour and then they eat it and they're done. It's, you know exactly what's going in there and you know what it's doing for them. And it's very special. Mm -hmm. So um, back to like kind of how we determine what to feed our dogs. Since switching to this raw diet, we try to feed minimally processed and minimal ingredient, if not single ingredient foods for the most part. So we started out strictly raw, but now DIY raw specifically. Yes. Thank goodness to Kayla. That's yeah. That's the only reason we were And to shout out that. to her because DIY raw is hard. Hard. If well, you don't have, especially if you don't have the stores like we didn't. Well, and I think with multiple, like three or more dogs, because I think Kayla has two, right? I believe so. So that third one for us just kind of was just like a little bit too much. Yeah. Like we were spending hours and you were spending hours and hours and hours. Well, and like... Not only researching it, but how many times did we go to Fort Collins, which was an hour away, to try to go to different butcheries or different butchers and different um, Asian markets and and different Whole Foods stores? 
only to really not find a lot of what we needed. So if you want to feed DIY, DIY raw, Kayla Kowalski, mm -hmm. she will teach you how mm -hmm. to do that and she's starting to do a lot of content about how to do it as like inexpensive as possible yes. like you know you might have to do a couple things up front like most ovens go pretty low but mm -hmm. you might like a dehydrator might make it a little bit easier for you so things like that but or even like a, i was thinking today i, I we may want to make a little content about diy food but like easy DIY food. Maybe you throw it in a crock pot all day and it's, you know, just the hot slop for dinner, but it's got the liver and the beef and all whatever you need in there. Another so. thing that's easier if you're like me. So I, when it's been strictly raw, I have been very minimally involved because it just, well, the raw we have been doing, like what we were doing from raw dog food and company with the tripe, it smells like cow shit. Yeah, it's, it literally smells like poop. I have a very weak stomach, so I'm so, so, so lucky that Bryce is able to do a lot of that. And But we've been also, instead of just advocating for a raw diet, we now advocate for a fresh diet, yeah. which has been fun for me because I have been able to like actually enjoy feeding them. Also, if my voice is a little crackly, <laughs> sounds like I'm crying. I'm just excited mm -hmm. and I get these nervous shakes. <laughs> like, can't control them. So, um, but yeah, so like with the with the foods that Kinsey is able to give them, it's still fresh food. But a lot of times, like barf and and spot and tango and Sundays, it's gently air dried. So they take these super fresh whole ingredients, not these synthetic vitamins and stuff, and they just air dry them to remove the water so that it's now shelf stable. And that's what we mean when we say we advocate for a fresh diet, minimally processed. Mm -hmm. um, the no fewer synthetic, ingredients, the better. Nothing synthetic. Yep, no synthetic vitamins. We're, we're trying to get nutrients from whole foods, even if those foods are raw, gently cooked, dehydrated, air dried, mm -hmm. whatever that may be. And that goes the same for treats. You know, with treats, we're looking for... As minimal Yeah, ingredient. even more specifically single ingredient ones. The, a lot of the supplements and stuff have more ingredients because they're doing multiple things or mm -hmm. multiple ingredients provide a similar benefit. Or they need to be like shelf stable exactly but um like you know we love king lou dog treats and they have all these single ingredient chicken hearts and chicken feet and that's pretty much exactly what we're looking for and what we advocate for for your dogs as well mm -hmm. so well we're not podcasters as you can tell so <laughs> i think i feel great i think we're gonna wrap that episode up here um for episode one of the BK Petcast, we so appreciate you tuning in, whether you're here on the podcast, listening on your drive, watching on YouTube. We appreciate you so much. And you're an amazing pet parent. You're doing so many wonderful things for your pets by just consuming this content and mm -hmm. even asking questions about what's going into their body. Totally. We have a lot of really cool things planned. Like I said earlier, it's not going to only just be Bryce and I on mm -hmm. the the podcast. Either. Yeah, we're, look, got... we're hoping to bring vets and experts. and. Mm -hmm. So if you like... If you have somebody you think you would like to see on the podcast or, or something. Or if you are somebody. <laughs> message us. Tag them. Tell them to message us. Yep. Email us at thebkpets at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. um, but just get a hold of us because this is the start of something really fun. And we just want this to be as beneficial to you as it possibly can be. That's so our goal. We appreciate you listening and we'll see you in the next episode.